Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and welcome back to another episode of our beautiful winter painting together. Now we're gonna go ahead and pick up where we left off, put in an extra building and a few trees, and just kind of clean up the foreground and midground areas. And be sure to wait to the end of the video and vote for how you'd like to see this painting continue. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here by doing a little distant line of evergreens. What this does is it'll help to link the foreground with the background. Now, you know, there are a couple ways to do this and I'm not talking about the brushwork, I'm actually talking about the composition. There's a couple ways we can do this. We can just cut the thing straight off and line, and it's easy. And it's okay, it's actually not, it's not like a negative thing all the time. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's a negative thing, but <laughs> I think it would be okay. We could get away with it today. I don't think we're going to. I think we should instead just, you know, allow, their, uh, allow a few openings to be in the trees. I think that would be prettier. So I'll tell you what, I'm not going to fill in this entire area with trees. There. I'm going to fill in only little bits with trees. Maybe these trees go down. You see, it's going to look a little harsh right now, a little hard, because I know it's soft. And we, and we want to keep this a soft painting. We're going to look a little on the harsh side for like five minutes, but don't worry. As soon as we get our snow, because we're going we're gonna to work, like you see those highlights? We're going to work with those highlights coming all the way through. It's going to be super pretty. So let's just... Let's just get us a little bit of tree action back here because that'll again help us, you know, so that we don't just draw a straight line of trees. We, we know that there's some trees back here as well. That's what we're representing. You'll watch these things light up when we put the highlights in and around. All right, I'm just finishing up here in the, on the side, just painting in a couple of larger trees, very similar color. I just darkened it a little, little bit. I'm gonna wipe out my brush and let's pick up some white. And I'm just going to tint my white for fun, because why, why have pure white when you can, you can tint it and make it just that much prettier. Just don't go crazy when you tint it. All right, that looks to be about right. Maybe a little more red, because we are going for a little bit of a warmer scene. So when I was painting these trees, I was really concerned that I was going to ruin our, our really pretty effect of light if I made this too dark, you know? So was being really careful but then I you know I darkened it and kept, I kept darkening it until I, I really think that actually by having these fairly dark it makes the sky look brighter so that's kind of interesting so no worries there all right <laughs> kind of fun now I'm gonna go ahead and take our color and and let's just start highlighting some of this area not a lot there because a lot of this is in shadow you got to think about where the lights coming from There. I don't care about my fence at all because we can repaint the fence. It wasn't even painted very well. I just threw it in there to make sure we knew where it was. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Love that little slice. So I like to tell you, you know, some, some of the reasons and some of my thoughts as we create this painting because we're really doing this together and I kind of want you to just be in on the creating process as you already are, obviously already are with the voting. But it kind of shows you why I I make the choices that I do for color, all that good stuff. There, soften that. Mm, nice, okay, so I don't want to go crazy, just want to keep, keep it subtle, maybe a little light sneaking through there. We'll touch there, behind, and then of course, oh yeah, we gotta do this, watch this. I do this most of the time when I paint buildings. I go with light, and then on the other side, light. Because that's cool. See that? Blend it in. Dry brush blending. There. Okay, now I'm going to tint that color to make a mid-tone. And, oh, that's not much of a mid-tone. <laughs> not much of a mid-tone at all. Yikes. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And I'm going to clean up any areas. Any areas that, you know, seem a little rough. And this is what I didn't want to rush through last week. Now, as we come forward in this painting, I'm going to change brush strokes, and I want to show you what I'm doing. See, normally when you do snow, you kind of pull it um, horizontally across, right? So as I come forward, what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to, I'm going to change into these little curvy strokes. Well, these curvy strokes are going to indicate rocks under the water, because you would expect to see some rocks by the, you know, by the river. So, and we know that the snow, as long as it's not like 10 feet deep, would, you know, settle in the cracks and bumps, right? So let's do that. That's kind of cool. And I'm doing this very quickly. See how that goes in quick? Obviously, the last thing you want to do is get into the same color over and over again. So you change 
blue, purple, and the little highlight color. And we do that over and over and over until we have a nice little effect, and I think we're starting to get there. Good. This is fun. All right, as we go, just see that? Look at that little brighter spot. That's okay. Again, look, I don't care about the, the fins. I can still kind of see where I put it, and we'll get it there. We'll get it back in a couple brush strokes. We'll highlight it this time. Make it look really pretty. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now let's go ahead and create a little light in here. So I'm kind of looking here. I think our, you know, our maximum light area is right about there. So I have my brush, same color as I used on the sky. I think it is. <laughs> I got it close. And let's come right down here and right about here. I'm going to start, to, well, look, why wouldn't we do it there? Well, that's obvious because you see, we don't want, this is the reflection. We don't want that to be bright. This is representing the sky more than anything else. But it's, it's all kind of impressionistic. That brown in there, that's okay. We can sort of brush over that. Good. That's because I touched my easel there and I had a, a different painting on it a few minutes ago. There. Now I'm going to brush it side to side. Obviously, this is dry brush blending. And that's kind of kind of about as good as it gets here with the dry brush blending. It's a little scratchy, but... Now, if you want to make this even smoother, you can thin the paint down, but you kind of get into trouble even over a dry canvas. I would never do this on a wet canvas, but even over, even over a dry canvas, you know, thinning the paint may cause problems for if you wanted to make adjustments, it might, you might not be able to, so it's up to you. There, that's pretty though, isn't it? So if you want to blend this, and I do, let me show you what you can, show you how you can do it. You can just take this color, which is essentially our, our snow color up here, and you can just sort of repaint the water here and then blend these two together. See how that works? And that's about all you need. Pretty simple. Now the last thing we're gonna do today is drop in a little fence. Of course, I got my brush loaded with light and dark because we want highlights and shadows and that's sort of the best way to do it when you're doing something small because that way you don't have to come back in all, all shaky and try to match up your shadow with the highlight. It's just a, a little bit of a shortcut. Obviously, if you'd rather not do it this way, that's fine matter. Just just in case you want to try something that I find makes it easier, you know, this is the way I would do it. There we go. That is really cool. See how I do it? Not so uh, hard. <laughs> there we go. Whoa. I had to stop and think for that word. Not so hard. A little bit softer in color. And I think that, I think that just makes it a little nicer. Now it's your turn to vote. So the first option we have is an old stump here in the foreground. Maybe just peeking out of the snow, it'll add a little extra variety and maybe some interest to the lower right corner. Or we could do some rocks that are sticking out of the snow all around the river bank. That might be interesting and add a little more contrast. Or third, we could put in a large evergreen tree on the right hand side. It might make a really nice little silhouette against the softness of the mountain. We'll make it just a little bit darker than the trees in the background. All right, well, that's all we're going to do on our little painting today. Now it's your turn to go to the website and vote for how you'd like to see this painting continue. Thanks for watching.